Well, today, more than 55,000 Canada Post workers went on strike, impacting mail deliveries across the country just before the holiday season rush. We hope Canada Post goes back to the bargaining table with decent offer for us. No one here wants to be here for the holidays. We're all looking forward to the holidays. The Grinch seems to have stolen Christmas for us. And for the holidays, we want to be able to work, but we want a fair contract at decent wages. We want to go back to work. But what they've imposed on us is irresponsible and not reasonable. The strike comes one year after negotiations began, and the union says this move is a last resort, saying Canada Post refused to negotiate real solutions to the issues postal workers face every day, in the union's words. The Canadian Union of Postal Workers has been negotiating for higher wages, more sick days, and improved benefits. John Hamilton is the Vice President of Strategic Communications and Stakeholder Engagement with Canada Post. And he's here with me now. John Hamilton, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on, David. Uh, those are big issues. There are big gaps. Why couldn't you get a deal? Uh, I think, uh, well, there's still a lot that we need to work through. Um, and uh, in terms of what we've put forward, uh, we've put forward a need for changes to our uh, delivery model to bring flexibility, to add uh, weekend delivery and more affordable options so that we could be more competitive in the parcel space because that's where the growth is in the delivery business. The mail business is still valuable, but it's from $5.5 in, in 2006 to $2 billion letters and, and further declining. So we put that forward in terms of a delivery model uh, change um, as well. We've told employees, uh, we'll make uh, your, your wages higher by about 11.5% over the next four years. There's obviously a gap. Uh, it's about half that. of what they're looking for. It's half of what they're looking for. But you also have to understand that our employees have cost of living allowances already baked into the collective agreement, and we're not changing that. And, and that triggers automatically on a quarterly basis. And that did trigger, obviously, when inflation was increasing. So. Beyond that, we're looking at, uh, we're not going to touch the defined benefit gold standard pension, the uh, job security that they have, um, but we need to build the business back and we need a more competitive delivery model that allows us to do that and, and compete in the spaces that we can't compete today, uh, most notably on weekend parcel delivery. So, so the picket lines have gone up, but the talks aren't off, right? Negotiations are still happening. Have you made any movement since, since uh, the, the, the labor action? The parties are continuing to talk. They were talking today and they will continue to talk, both uh, committed to, to reaching a deal. Um, it's just been really disappointing because there were di discussions going on last night. Mm. And um, you've heard what we've put forward. We're not, employees don't lose under our proposals, uh, they gain. Um, and uh, last night they decided to go full on and shut down the postal system with a national, national postal strike. And that not just in, in, uh, impacts Canada Post and our employees, that goes ripple effects right across the country. So you've got charities who have uh, fundraising mailers out right now that that's not right. going to work. You've got small businesses who are counting us to deliver. You've got rural, remote, northern communities that rely on Canada Post, and we are essentially shut down. So there's those ripple effects. Then there's a long-term impact where just the uncertainty of the potential strike, our parcel volumes have been declining. Last week we were down 28%. Now we've got nothing. Right. So as people, they still need to get their parcels moved. Businesses still need to move their product around. So they're going to look for alternative delivery. You're already struggling in your business model, as you say, losing about $3 billion over the last number of years. It's yep. some of the numbers we've seen. Uh, I mean, there is an urgency to get this resolved because of the time of the year. And if you lose people, you may lose them for good. Oh, absolutely. And uh, if you look at, we've always had competition in the parcel business, mm -hmm. but as we came out of COVID, Canadians developed that online shopping habit, and uh, that meant more and more parcels, and that meant more and more competition. So there are more people in the delivery business in Canada probably than at any other time um, in the nation's history. So we are up against strong competition that can offer a service where if you're sitting at home on a Friday night, you know, click and order something, it shows up on a Saturday or a Sunday. That's not us delivering that because the only way we can do that is to offer double time to our right. employees because we're outside the Monday to Friday built for mail delivery window that we've had for so many years. So the $3 billion loss, a reported loss since 2018, yep. we had a representative of the union on the other day who kind of disputes the value of that number, arguing that a lot of that is capital investment, building a new sorting station, I believe it was in Scarborough, investing in new uh, fleet of vehicles, electrification of the fleet, and that's not really a true picture of the financial situation Canada Post is facing? Well, I first, 
anyone that is arguing that we shouldn't put any money into the into the business, we are already behind the competition. So we should be investing in technology. We had a gateway plan in in, uh, in the GTA, which was our parcel processing plant that had been over capacity for years. Half the parcels in Canada originate in the GTA. So we built a new plant to bring much needed capacity to the marketplace. But you just have to look at the business, and I don't think it's lost on Canadians that the amount of mail in the system has, has declined sure. significantly. The parcels that we're delivering, we are delivering less and less. Um, so there's no great conspiracy. The postal system, just like postal systems around the world, are struggling to find their path forward. Um, but at the same time, we have made investments in the business. And as for the electric vehicles, we only have 100 of them that we're testing right, right now. No, look, and I appreciate you need to invest in the business, but there's one-time capital costs, and then there's operational costs. Is that a $3 billion operational loss, or does that include capital investments? Because it, it matters in terms of understanding oh, the, the, the absolutely. pure health of the company. Have we been trying to catch up and invest in the business at the same time? Like, there, we're looking mm -hmm. at all areas where we can improve and be more competitive and grow the business. So anything, any investments we make are to grow the business. But, you know, you look at labor costs, they were up 6.5% last year. So our annual, our daily payroll is $10 million dollars a day so it is a labor-intensive business that you know we have great people uh, they have good paying jobs and we want to continue to do that but the reality is we can't add more full-time employees mm -hmm. especially with the job security because it's a job for life so I spoke to uh, federal labor minister Stephen McKinnon earlier we're gonna play that conversation later in the show right now they are counting on you guys to get a deal at the bargaining table they've offered mediation services and escalated it I think last night to try to, to, to get you there they're not looking at a binding arbitration option at this point in time, even though Black Friday and Christmas are coming yep. up, and this is when they legislated a, a settlement in 2018, and they're not really looking at back-to-work legislation. So given that and the gap between you and the union, I mean, how optimistic are you that this is going to be a short disruption? Well, we got to get it done. Uh, we don't want um, mediation. We want to sit down and hammer out, because if you look at what we're offering, it's about building a path forward so we can build a more sustainable postal system. Right. And the best way to do that is to agree on what that looks like so that when then we can attack the competition together after that. Fighting between ourselves, shutting the whole postal system down, putting up a uh, close sign at the postal system at this time of year is a, lot, a big step in the wrong direction. Um, but if we're going to go forward together and take on the competition and secure the postal system, what it means, not just to Canadians and urban, but rural, remote, and all of that, and be the equalizer between um, the large global retailers and the global um, delivery companies that we're up against because nobody else wants to, to, to uh, serve the far-flung and expensive areas of Canada, but we're there because we don't leave Canadians behind, so we got to fix this. But on wages alone, just as a final question, 11.5% over four years versus 22, 23 that the union is looking for. I mean, how do you even begin to bridge that gap when you talk about the challenges you're facing as a company? Well, we'll continue to uh, to talk about that, um, but there we have to put forward um, options and proposals that we can afford over the next four years. All the indicators on our business are going the wrong direction. So let's first look at how we grow that business and then look at wages because we'd love to grow our business so we're in a position to do more and invest more. Uh, invest more in our people as well. We're just not there. And, and anybody that's looked at our finances for two seconds would say, yeah, you, you can't afford that. John Hamilton, Vice President of Strategic Communications at Canada Post. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for being here. Thank you, David. Canadians can expect major postal delays as more than 55,000 Canada Post employees began strikes today. Negotiations fell apart between the union and Canada Post after almost a year of talks, leaving deliveries on hold just ahead of the holiday season. Canada Post says this move is a step in the wrong direction. We got to get it done. Uh, we don't want um, mediation. We want to sit down and hammer out because if you look at what we're offering, it's about building a path forward so we can build a more sustainable postal system. Right. And the best way to do that is to agree on what that looks like so that when then we can attack the competition together after that. Fighting between ourselves, shutting the whole postal system down, putting up a uh, close sign at the postal system at this time of year is a, lot, a big step in the wrong direction. And says the, the federal government says the only path right now to resolution is through negotiations. Stephen McKinnon is the Minister of Labor and he joins me now. Minister, welcome back to the show. Good evening, David. So you've had mediators at the table with Canada Post and its union trying to get a deal. It, it didn't work. There's a full-blown strike now. So what can the federal government do? Well, it hasn't worked yet. Uh, of course, uh, mediators uh, will continue to try and assist these parties uh, in bridging what 
I, I do have to characterize as significant differences. Um, there are a number of issues that remain to be negotiated that uh, the parties will have to bridge uh, in what is in some cases a, a significant gulf. Uh, but we, of course, are sparing no effort with respect to the resources of uh, the Labour Department and the Labour Program in uh, trying to facilitate a, a collective agreement. You've used binding arbitration or used the uh, Industrial Relations Board to, use, to, to lead to binding arbitration for rail uh, lockouts and port lockouts. At what point do you consider doing a similar measure for what's happening with the mail service? Well, I would never rule out any tool that the Canada Labour Code uh, offers uh, uh, the, the Labour Minister. But what I will say is that for now and for the foreseeable future, we believe that this dispute belongs uh, at the bargaining table with uh, the services of uh, some of the best uh, mediators uh, in the world uh, assisting them. Um, it's not a secret. David, that um, Canada Post is, um, uh, in terms of its business model and the business environment it, it exists in, has uh, undergone, uh, you know, a number of uh, transformations. So we have to ensure a, an environment where, uh, within that, the aspirations of the union and the workers uh, are are, uh, are met, but also uh, the business objectives of the corporation. That's the uh, essence of any collective bargaining and uh, it's uh, it's a challenging environment but it's one that we remain persuaded needs to be settled at the table. Yeah, look, they're pretty far away uh, apart on wages and and, th and issues around pensions and scheduling, but you said for the foreseeable future. How long do you let this go on for because there are small businesses uh, that rely on on this uh, for their operations. You're getting up to the holiday season where Christmas gifts are going to be flying back and forth across the country. And a disruption yes. like this uh, is quite significant. So what does for the foreseeable future mean? Well, I don't want to speculate. Of course, we evaluate this uh, regularly, even minute by minute. Um, and we'll always bring, as we have in other disputes, uh, the perspective and the context in which these negotiations are occurring. So, of course, we will be listening to retailers, small businesses, of course, the employees of Canada Post and their families. We'll be listening to all of those people uh, as we uh, continue through this, uh, this very difficult negotiation. That's my job as the Minister of Labour, is to bring the aspirations, the hopes and the context uh, in which this is going on uh, uh, to the uh, negotiating table. And, uh, uh, cajole, prod, and assist parties in making a deal. But, you know, Minister, in 2018, uh, when Canada Post was on strike, your government legislated them back to work. And the argument then was that the, the shopping demands of Black Friday and, and, and the Christmas holidays necessitated it. We're a week away from Black Friday. Um, so does, you know, and I know Parliament is in this uh, stalled state because of the filibuster happening over the privilege motion. But, I mean, Black Friday is a week away. So are the circumstances any different in 2024 than they were in 2018? Isn't that still the pressure point that you need to consider? Well, um, what I would say is that we'll continue to assess that on a daily basis. And obviously, I'm aware that any uh, disruption in the activities of Canada Post is going to have an impact uh, on our economy, on Canadian families. We're obviously listening closely to that and very sensitive to that. Uh, but there, these are significant negotiations that come uh, at a critical time for the workers and for the corporation. Uh, and these are differences that need to be worked out at the negotiating table. So uh, once again, David, if uh, either of those parties are listening, uh, what I'm saying is do the work, knuckle down, uh, and uh, achieve a good agreement uh, that assures the future viability of Canada Post the services it provides to Canadians, but also gives a fair deal uh, with a safe workplace to the people who work there. You move very quickly, though. I know the scale of a port disruption is much larger than the Canada Post disruption because of the amounts of cargoes and things coming in and the, the, the two ports that were affected by this. But you move very quickly on those to, to refer them to, to binding arbitration. Why a slower approach here now that there is a full-scale disruption happening at Canada Post? Well, I want to remind you, in the case of the railways or the ports, you had our two main la mainline railways in one case, and ports on both coasts uh, of a, a vast country uh, in the other case, with hundreds of thousands of unionized and other jobs on the line. 
businesses saying they would run out of inventory or parts, so auto manufacturers uh, or others who import uh, goods or need to see them transported, uh, or others who export so potash, grain, wheat, um, uh, where we've made significant commitments to uh, the world and its food supply, uh, and obviously deriving a great economic benefit for farmers and others uh, in our country. So. Um, when I talked earlier about needing to bring the context uh, of Canadians' reality to the table, that was very, very much present uh, in the case of the ports, in the case of the railways. You had hundreds of thousands of jobs and livelihoods and investments uh, on the line, and, uh, and uh, so we, were, we felt compelled uh, to act. In the case of Canada Post, we'll never rule anything out, uh, David, but we believe that the issues are such that they need to be resolved between parties at a negotiating table. So is back-to-work legislation an option? Uh, I mean, I don't know how you'd get it through Parliament right now, where you'd find a partner, where you'd even get the window to table the legislation. But is that something you are considering at this point, sir? Uh, no. Uh, what I'm considering is uh, continuing to support these parties and negotiate. Um, and quite apart from considering any uh, legislative path, I do I think I need to mention this, that Pierre Polyev's decision to suspend, to prevent, not just the government, but other opposition parties from debating and discussing the issues of the day in the Parliament of Canada is abhorrent, uh, it's beneath contempt, it's cynical, uh, and he sends uh, backbench MPs in every day to give speeches about nothing. Uh, and prevent uh, our democratically elected parliament from uh, discussing the issues of the day, David, that is uh, uh, something that I think Canadians will view with a great deal of disgust. Well, on your point just now, though, uh, about what's happening in Parliament, your government could comply with the compulsion order from Parliament to produce documents. There is a privilege matter there that is at stake that you disagree with as a government, but it is the will of Parliament, and you could comply with because it in the privilege motion become a running joke. The RCMP say they don't want the documents. Uh, the Auditor General says she's seen everything she needs to see. Uh, this, as we know, David, uh, we know this is an open secret. Uh, Mr. Polyev's move is cynical. Uh, it's twisted, and it's designed to prevent the debates on the great issues of the day uh, from occurring in Parliament. And uh, I think Canadians view it with a great deal of disdain, and who really uh, is buying any of this stuff from Pierre Polyev and his backbenchers? Labour Minister Stephen McKinnon, thanks for your time today, sir. Thank you, David.